I've used Plasma 6 via KDE Neon for 30 days, and I'm sharing my experience with you, the viewer. Firstly, right out of the box, compared to GNOME, which I've used for about three years, KDE had a completely different, more traditional user interface that looked much older and very similar to Windows in several ways. I personally find the more traditional workflow less efficient than GNOME's, but that's just my opinion. Plasma 6 does have workspaces that are clearly a ripoff of GNOME's, but they work pretty well, although I still find GNOME's overview easier to use and more productive. KDE recently got its sixth mega release, Plasma 6, in which you'd most likely expect a new look and feel among major improvements, but no. Plasma 6 still uses the old Breeze theme from Plasma 5, with barely any changes, no noticeable ones at least, and Breeze is starting to look very old, cluttered, and in my opinion, a bit ugly, especially compared to other options. Also, I find desktop icons horrendous, and I hate them. GNOME doesn't have desktop icons, which not only looks better, but also keeps me a lot more organized, whereas KDE has them enabled by default, and disabling them is a bit confusing. The desktop settings are apparently not a part of the system settings app. Instead, you have to right-click the desktop and click Configure Desktop and Wallpaper. And like, why is disabling desktop icons in the wallpaper section instead of the icons section? It's just weird. Then I got on a Discord call and wanted to test the XWayland video bridge, so I tried sharing my screen using XWayland, but it just wouldn't display anything. Now, if I try to use it, it keeps on asking me which screen I would like to use, over and over and over. Also, for some reason, my mic volume was initially set all the way down to 13%, although that was easily fixable, but still weird. Also, my headphones mic would just refuse to work even though it worked perfectly fine on GNOME. And in X11, some Discord activities have graphic issues. One thing I do like about KDE is the professional apps like Caden Live, which is from my personal experience, by far one of the best free and open source video editors out there. It works nearly flawlessly and just gets the job done. Something that happened like literally every 30 minutes of every day though, was freezes. KDE is completely frozen right now, and this happens every single day, and every single minute, and it's so annoying. And it's just so buggy, nothing works. So, yep. KDE always freezes up like this. Like, it just completely freezes up, oh, and now it unfroze. So that's another annoying issue with KDE. KDE has completely frozen again. I can't move anything. And there, so now it finally loads. This happens like every 30 minutes and it's so unproductive and annoying. KDE froze again. Oh, and all of a sudden it unfroze. So this happens very often, like all of the time. Also, another problem I've had is that certain websites like Canva are very laggy. Like if I try to type, as you can see, it's just very slow, like, it's just like taking forever to to input, and that's very weird. I'm not sure what causes that, but yeah. KDE just froze again. Oh, and there we go. Finally, it unfroze. Okay, so I'm trying to log out of Wayland back into X11 or into X11, I usually use Wayland. But regardless, I'm trying to log out. When I click log out, nothing happens. Absolutely nothing. I can click it again. I can click it again. Absolutely nothing happens. So, I'm not sure what causes this, as like most of the errors in KDE, but it's just another problem that happens once in a while. And uh, yeah. As you can see, it's clearly not doing anything whatsoever. I can't even click restart. That also does nothing. Or shut down. None of these work. So what I have to do is manually turn off my computer. Which isn't the worst thing, but you know it'd be great if KDE worked this time. 
so now I have to restart it. And KDE froze again, as you can see. Just completely froze again. Oh, and now it's back. Oh, and Firefox crashed. Would you look at that? So, um, this is a very common experience for me. It happens all the time. And KDE froze again. Oh, and it unfroze. Nope, it did not yet. Okay, now it did. Also, Firefox just has tons of issues in KDE Neon that I've never experienced in other Linux distros or operating systems. Downloads in Firefox would also get stuck for a while before continuing, which is strange. This happened very often and was extremely annoying and unproductive. Sometimes I just quickly needed an image to use in a design or send to someone and I would just have to sit there waiting for the download to continue without the ability to even stop it or pause it. When trying to save an image in any web browser, I would have to wait like several minutes for the file picker to open just for like 20 file picker windows to open because I clicked save image as over and over. And here come the windows. And Firefox would also crash often for some reason, which rarely, if ever, happens on other Linux distros or operating systems. I had issues where a window would just relocate suddenly and the window border would be above the screen so I couldn't move the window without first quitting the app. This is a very weird issue for sure and if you have something important to open, forget about it. Okay, so a weird problem I've been having with KDE or more specifically SGDM, the login manager, is sometimes it's on but I can't tell because the screen is just black and it shows the cursor. But as you can see, if I hover over this text box right here, it's completely black, but if you just hover over it, the text box is there. And um, as you'll see in a moment, when I put in my password and hit enter, it will actually log in. Okay, and I successfully logged in. So um, I just hit enter and it logged me in. So that was weird that, I don't know if it's some graphic issue with SDDM, but that happens sometimes. In the first week, I was making my GNOME 46 review, but when I tried downloading and installing GNOME OS and GNOME Boxes to review it, it would load for a little bit and then just fail to start. I was however able to fix this by downloading the bare metal ISO directly from the website and using that for the VM. Another very big issue I have with KDE is screencasting, which I have to do very often to get clips for my videos. And when I try to screencast, it just cuts off somewhere early or midway into the recording and only records like a little snippet of everything it's supposed to record. And it's hit or miss. Sometimes it records the full thing, sometimes it does not. So let's test this by attempting to make a screencast. Okay, and now let's see how much of the screencast it actually recorded. So if we stop the screencast. It only captured, as you can see, four seconds of it. That was like a good 30 seconds or so. Uh, as you saw, we were going through web pages and such. And as you can see, that's all that it recorded, that's it. And that is a pretty common issue for me, and it's it's pretty bad. Um, again, it's hit or miss, but yeah, when it happens, it's really not great. And these were only a few of the hundreds of bugs I've encountered with KDE Neon and Plasma 6. KDE Plasma 6 has just overall been a horrible experience. Probably my worst Linux experience yet, even worse than Alpine Linux, and it'll be a while before I give it another shot. And yes, some of the issues were from Neon, and some of them were from KDE itself. But there are still issues, and a lot do seem to be more desktop environment problems than distro problems. Also, people say KDE is more functional than GNOME, but I found the complete opposite. 
There are some cases where GNOME apps have necessary features that KDE apps lack. While the KDE apps are usually bloated with tons of useless options that clutter the UI and I'll never even touch. Next week, I'll be switching to Debian with GNOME again for 30 days, so stay tuned for that. Subscribe if you like my content and join the Penguin Byte Discord community with the link in the description below. Thanks for watching, see you next time.